So look at this beautiful, just refurbished Trek 520 touring bike. And to me, I need to see if I can find a rack to go on the back. After this. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. Obviously, I'm a garage shop. Taking scary how to use bikes one bike at a time. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. So I found myself a rack. And I put it in my sink, shop tank, tub, shop sink, and I washed it. And it but it has this dullness to it. And of course, these are not originally this doll is sun faded so what I was gonna try to do is use some of this uh, ceramic liquid wax hybrid I'm gonna try to bring some little more um, detail and you know make it look nice because I don't want to put a doll rack right onto a pretty nicely refurbished bike so by doing this the clean surface I'm just going to apply it with the applicator here. Smoosh around in there. And hopefully this will bring out the darkness. And this particular ceramic coating says apply twice to make sure you get all the areas, wait to dry. And I did the frame with this stuff too after I did all the polishing and detailing. So I just wanted to provide some good little details here. And these are kind of powder coated black. Oh, that's actually, if it stays that color, that's going to be perfect. Because that's what it looks like when it was new. And give an extra little added protection. The reason being is racks take kind of a lot of abuse, especially if it's going to be on a touring bike. It's going to be loaded down with packs and extra bits hanging off of it. I just wanted to see if I can get this to be a lot more presentable. And I mean, typically you probably want to do the bottom, but I figured <laughs> what the heck I'm here anyway. This has a I swear that with these like waxes and polishes and so forth, they, they add kind of a, a, a scent to them so they smell good. I know the, I don't know, the muck off stuff. It's crazy. It's like almost addicting to sniff it. <laughs> Just weird to me. So, all right. So we got it. One good coating. So let's do the second one and you know I probably could have used a polish before this but I figure it's just a rack I just want to make it look a little nicer than it was and add some protection to it even though it's aluminum this one's an aluminum rack most of them are um, you know, protected protection protected coating definitely get the external areas where the bags and everything's going to fit. These act like kind of like a fender too because they have all that splash coverage, but you want that to cover the cover those areas anyway because you don't want your bags to, a lot of the bags are waterproof per se, but it's one of those things where you don't want your stuff, your gear to get drenched if all possible. So I'm trying to get at this at every angle. rack I mean it shows a little bit of wear it had something on it at one point this was a takeoff on another bike that it didn't need a rack on it that kind of thing so there we go all right let's let it sit for three to five minutes and then we'll take a fiber cloth to buff it down Okay, we're looking at five minutes in. Let's give it a good little 
wipe here. Wow, that actually, I mean, they're not shiny. This is not a shiny black, it's a dull black originally. But that definitely looks a lot better than sun etched ash white film looking. Yeah, there we go. All right. Let's get this on the bike. Rear racks, right? How to put them on, how to get the right size. Okay, a lot of manufacturers will have their specific ones. Trek, Bontrager, Bontrager will have ones that fit the particular bike, so you can look up what fits what. And there's gonna be a size thing. Small, or medium, or medium, small, and then large, extra large. That's gonna determine what kind of kit that goes with it in addition to the rack itself. So, <clears throat> As a mechanic, these are not our favorite thing to install whatsoever. But over the years, they've made them a lot easier. Um, it's probably second in line to fenders. Fenders are something we really don't like installing either. Uh, but anywho, uh, this is a rack that was a takeoff of another bike. Um, to start with, you wanna loosen these bolts up here or mount them so these are fluid. Uh, that'll make it easier to actually install. So what we got here on this particular bolt pattern is Allen on one side that fits here. And then you have, a. I suggest if you have by chance a ratcheting style, um, that will oop, make it a little easier to loosen these up because you gotta do a lot of, you know, kind of awkward angle tightening. And if you can do it, with a little ratchet, it makes life a lot easier. So, I think we're there. Loosen them up so they can slide back and forth. You want that because you want to be able to angle the rack flush. So you'll need to put it on the ground or even it out on your on your uh, repair stand. But this gives you that ability. Those particular, so with these particular racks, these bolts on the bottom part here or the nuts are, have like a Teflon leave it kind of tighten down and hold their position which is great you don't want these things loosening up on you while you ride right so there we have it four contacts on this particular one got two on the bottom two on the top this particular frame is designed they threaded and I did check the threadings but if you need to clean the threads up you can use actual bolt to do that but just make sure there's grease and just thread those in or to get professional on it, trying to get professional, you have a thread chaser for the appropriate size and you uh, use cutting oil grease to clean those threads up. Uh, a lot of bike shops will have these because they get across situations where they'll have a boogered up thread um, on multiple and they'll have ones that have multiple sizes of these. So case in point, how to fix a few in my time. So. We're gonna see if this rack first fits over the fender. Ooh, yeah, looking, looking pretty good there. What I like to do is first put the bolts on the bottom here. What that does is stabilizes the base of it. Well, with the new one, you'll have a kit of bolts. I had to find some bolts that I had in stock, left over. And these here, you want to be careful to not to be too long. Because if too long, they'll go through the other side and interfere with your drivetrain. If it does poke out too much, what you do is you just put a couple spacers to push it out. And it looks like I'm going to have to do that on this one. But let me get this side on first. Not so critical on the non-drive side because there's nothing really gonna be sticking out of that. Option there is more. More you say? Push the more button. Push it, push it, I dare you to push it. Once you push that button, you get more details about the video you are watching in addition to all the tools that I use in the shop as well as suggestion for improving your ride. In addition to, to help me provide advocacy in the cycling community, also links to other social media accounts as well as my website to find the products that I actually sell and other insights in the industry. Other videos linked below, extend your cycling experience here on YouTube.
And now back to your original programming. After this. Well, uh, since this one was too long, I found one that might be a little shorter. This is just enough that sticks out on the other end that probably going to interfere. So you're looking at just maybe three, four millimeters shorter. Get this guy to go in there. Yep, it doesn't look like it's hardly sticking out the other side from here. And what we're looking at is right here. So when I knock this down to the smallest cog, it is not going to rub up against that chain or get close to it. You don't want anything to catch up there. Well, since we have those set, now we're ready to put our rack in position and some reflector rubbish here. But these guys will bend, so you want to bend these down so they become flush, like so. This is where it gets tricky because you got to force the pressure of this down so you get that gap and you start threading your bolt up there. Once you get a couple threads in there, then you can proceed. And these you can go ahead and tighten down. Here's this little burger. So you need to try to aim it, slide it in back and forth so you get a clean shot at it. And you lock your <laughs> bolt in your tool and you kind of do the trick. You can see why mechanics get frustrated because if you have any complications here. So you can do it two ways. You can do it on the outside and also you can do it on the inside. Or also up here on the top, there's two positions too. So we'll take a look what we want to do. You want to be able to do the one that has the most efficient force to it. And then once it's there, then you can adjust this slide back and forth so it's flush. We'll take a look other direction it's like, looks like. So now since we have this mounted on our four spots then you want to adjust your uh, rack so it's flush as far as it'll go back. Now this is as far as this one's going to go back which is probably good enough is you'll have enough room for a bag and so forth. To so tighten this up again that's where this ratcheting piece goes Put it inside here. Receive the tighten of all four bolts. In conclusion, I got the bottom mount to work perfectly, but the top ones need a little bit of longer extension. So I found a set to install those plus on the rack itself to put on the external holes. So it was more flush to the outside bolt mounts on the frame. It turned out wonderfully, got a level position for the rack. So whatever bag is put on there will have plenty of space and it is ready to roll for the next rider. Well, thank you for hanging with me in the garage. Until the next time, have a wonderful day.